The following podcast is taken from a live broadcast on Inspire FM. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Book Club Show on Inspire 105.1 FM. My name is Imrana Mahmood and I'm your host this morning. I personally am really, really happy because on the school run this morning, I saw um, the trees were blossoming and that always, always cheers me up because I love spring. It's one of my favorite seasons. Um, Now, we have a really, really special show um, today. And I have to say, I'm so excited because I am back in the Inspire FM studio um, for the first time since lockdown. Um, And I was just saying to uh, Brother Tarek, actually, in the morning, I I was getting a bit nervous because I wanted to make sure I know exactly what to do with all the buttons which are in front of me. So, inshallah, everything um, should be fine and I won't make a mistake. Um, But more importantly... We are joined in the studio by students from Beechwood Primary School and we will be talking today about the Lunchtime Book Club. Um, So I'm going to give you a bit of information about what the Lunchtime Book Club is. It's a programme which is a pilot project aiming to increase literary engagement among children in Luton. Um, We want to build positive associations with reading, in particular reading at school, and encourage more children to read books for fun and to have more confident discussions about books with each other. Um, Now, many of you might know that I also run... um, other than hosting the book club show, I also run the Armana book club and book clubs have been such a special, um, I think, kind of um, staple ingredient in my life. It gives me um, a reason to wake up in the morning. I love reading books. I love discussing books. And I think anything which um, empowers, encourages children and young people to do the same is fantastic. So um, the Lunchtime Book Club is actually an initiative which is run by um, um, Talia Kadri, who is a Luton creative leader at the moment. And um, so this is basically her baby. And we've also had um, Dalla Primary School involved. And I think really the aim here is to um, go forward and to continue working with more schools, um, inshallah, and get, uh, you know, more children on board and discussing books which is exactly what this show is about so i am going to introduce our lovely lovely guests so we have um zahra sateish baba mustafa and hamza so i'm going to say good morning morning Morning. lovely um it's so lovely to have you all um in the studio and thank you obviously to your teachers as well for bringing you down and and driving and taking time out of school because i know teachers are very very busy Apparently, but I'm sure they are. Um, so I thought what would be a really lovely question is because we just had World well Book Day, I was interested to know what character um, you dressed up as um, on World well Book Day. So I'm going to go to um, Hamza first. Oh, for World well Book Day, I dressed up as Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Do you like Harry Potter? Yeah, I love Harry Potter. Fantastic. Okay. And which is there a particular book of Harry Potter that you um, is, is a, your, a favourite of yours? Well, I haven't read all the books, but um, I'm getting really enticed by um, Philosopher's Stone. The Philosopher's Stone. Ah, okay. Lovely. Actually, have you seen the movies? Do you watch the movies too? Yeah, I've seen a few movies, yeah. What is better, the book or the movie? Probably the book. Good. You said the right thing. Well done. I was almost worried you might, because I know some adults say, oh, you know, we we never read the book, but uh, watched the movie. But fantastic. Okay, Harry Potter. All right, now coming to Mustafa, how about yourself? Um, yeah, I did do uh, Harry Potter as well because I know that our subject is going to be Harry Potter. So right. I would like know more and how to describe Harry Potter on my new work. Fantastic, because you're in year five, isn't it? So you're going to be studying Harry Potter now in this term. Lovely. Okay, that's that's really good. So I look forward to actually reading some of that work um, at some point. Um, right, let's go to um, Satayish next. Um, for World Book Day, for World Book Day, I dressed up as a uh, Red Riding Hood. Red Riding Hood. Oh, that's lovely. So you, you actually had a whole like hood, and you you were all dressed up properly. I didn't have a hood. There was nothing I could wear. Anymore. Oh, okay, but kind of almost there. Okay, fantastic. That's great. Okay, and how about um, Miss? Is no, we've had Mustafa, haven't we? We are now in Barber. What did you dress up as? I dressed up as Thor for World Book Day. Thor? Did you have a hammer? <laughs> Yeah, I made my own at home. Oh, fantastic. Okay, lovely. Yes, Thor, Thor is a good one. Thor is a good one. And lastly, we're going to Zahra. What about yourself? Uh, I, I dressed up as a, um, Asya from the Proudest Blue Book. It's, about, it's a book about hijab and family. Oh, fantastic. Because that is book, is that based on Ibtihaj Muhammad, am I right? 
Yep. Yeah, so Ibtahaj Mohammed is an Olympic fencer. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, so very different characters for World Book Day, but, you know, equally is um, interesting and fun. So um, fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Right, okay, so we are obviously talking today on the show about specifically about the Lunchtime Book Club. Um, and I've obviously explained a little bit um, about what that is. If maybe I come to Mustafa, can you explain for our listeners um, why were you interested in being part of this book club? I was really interested because it's just the feeling of talking to somebody just yeah feels nice you know yeah so because I guess usually what happens you have like a nice chat yeah exactly because I guess usually what would happen is you'd read a book but you don't maybe have a chance to speak to other people who read the same book so yeah I mean I definitely like that's one of my reasons I like being part of a book club um okay how about um Sitayish what is um what was your reason to being part of the book club well um I don't know because um (laughs) it's okay (laughs) Um, do you want to, shall I come back to you? Do you want to have a bit of think about that? Okay, how, uh, Zahra, how about yourself? Uh, I wanted to share my thoughts and um, opinions on books. Your thoughts and opinions on books. Okay, and do you think do you think it helped in any way to, um, like, did it improve anything for you? Or like, you know, in terms of skills, in terms of how you speak or talk? Uh, yeah. Anything specific, though? Can you think of anything specific it helped um, you with? It would yes. help the public speaking. Oh. Like speaking to the public. Nice. Yeah, because you get used to talking in front of other people, right? Okay, fantastic. No, I love that answer. Um, who else? So how about Barbara? What about yourself? Uh, I was interested in being being part of the lunchtime book club because really you get you get to, you get to like talk about with other people about how you felt about the book and why, right, yeah. Mm, yeah, exactly, and, and, and why and your feelings about it. Um, Hamza, how about yourself? Well, I just loved reading books, and I felt that with the Lunchtime Book Club, I could not only expand my vocabulary, but can discuss books with other book lovers, which oh, I love. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, no, other book lovers is definitely good. I think, you know, there's a word for book lover, which I think is like a bibli- bibliophile. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but there's something like that, but I like that. Well done. Um, right, so... I'm really interested to know, though, because obviously this is something quite new. I think your school tried out to so Beechwood Primary School. Um, I know, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Talia, for example, approached the school and asked if you'd be interested. And um, I know your teacher, Miss Miller, was really, really keen to get involved. So I guess my question is, what did you actually need to do in order to be part of this book club? Was there anything um, specific? So, um, Barbara, do you want to answer that one? Uh, what we needed to do was actually write a uh, there was this letter we got about why you want to be in a book club and if you wanted to participate you obviously had to write here you had to write why you wanted to be a book club or what was what was really like interested in, interesting about it and would you do you like books or not and what yeah mm, so it's almost like you had to apply is it like almost mm, like an yeah. application okay that's interesting um and Satesh, um how about yourself so um is there anything particular that you remember that you wrote you know in in terms of your little like letter or, or application to it um um for the application um, I didn't really write anything because I lost my thing, but then Miss oh. Miller came and gave yeah. me a opportunity yeah. oh that's so good i know because sometimes it's really important when you know someone's really keen and and reading and everyone needs to get an opportunity and you know being part of book club is, is really really um i think it's really meaningful isn't it so that's fantastic um how about yourself zahra do you remember anything yeah, specific i had to um write paragraphs yeah no, I, you had to be very persuasive Oh, persuasive. That's, that's the word. Persuasive. Is that the word you're looking mm. for? Okay. But in what in what sense? What are you trying to persuade? Like, what is it about Miss Miller you were hoping to persuade her? Because you, because uh, I really wanted to get in the book club, so I tried to persuade um, her to get me into the book club. Well, so did you have to show her what that you really love books, or is it just that you you'd be really good at talking about them? Which one was it? I think they, it was both because you need to love books and uh, want to talk about them. Okay, interesting. Um, Hamza, did you want to add anything to that? Well, we just need to say why we really deserve to get in, why we belong in the book club. Right, okay, yeah. why why you definitely belong there. And I think that that's another thing, isn't it? When you're part of a particular group, or maybe a reading group, you do have that sense of belonging, isn't it? Because you're with other people who are quite like-minded, who have similar interests and 
you know really beautiful things can kind of grow for something like that that's lovely um now so obviously it's been a few weeks or a few months how long has it um been now that you've been part of the club do you remember i think it's been somewhere around three two months Okay, like a few months. Okay, so I, I, what at this point, moment in time, so you've read, um, I think, is it four books that you've read so far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four yeah, books. Four. Okay, so um, do you want, uh, Barbara, do you, can you share with our listeners what those four books are? What four books did you read? We read Noah's Gold, was a, Noah's Gold mm-hmm. Rave Riders, and uh, Squidges, Squidges Guide to Super Stories, and Marcus Rashford as well. Fantastic. Okay, so um, just for our listeners, in case you know anyone wants um, their own copy of these books, so um, the books were Wave Riders, which is written by Lawrence St. John. Um, there is Noah's Gold, written by Frank Cottrell Boyce. Um, there's You Are a Champion, which is Marcus, uh, Marcus Rashford. And there's The Squidge's Guide to... Um, I need to read it properly. The Squidge's Guide to Super Stories, so Becoming, becoming a Better Writer, which is written by... Catherine Hetzel. Um, so some lovely, lovely selection of books. Um, Zahra, so did you get to choose the books for yourself for this book club or how did that kind of work? Who was choosing the books for you? Um, uh, Miss Miller told us uh, which um, which book that you wanted to choose. So I chose Marcus Rashford because I found it really uh, hooking. Mm, you thought it was a really good hook. So you were basically given four books and then you needed to choose what was your favourite. Yeah. And yours was uh, Mar- Marcus Rashford. Okay. Well, Satish, w- which one did you particularly enjoy in terms of your book? Um, I really like, out of all of them, I really liked Noah's Gold because, like, the, the mysteries in there was just really hooking me in. Okay, so it was like a mystery type book. Okay. Um, how about yourself, Mustafa? Which book did you particularly enjoy? I was really hooked into Noah's Gold because it's a funny book it's mm. a mysterious book and it okay. just hooked me right in from the start right like the first off when i read a little bit of the blurb i knew it was gonna be a good book right that's really interesting isn't it because you've all three of you at the moment have used the word hook and that's such an important part of a story isn't it the fact that if you get hooked right from the beginning the fact that you got hooked even from the blurb um i know is really interesting because myself i always always read the blurb of a book um i know there's people actually who go who start reading it without reading the blurb and i find that really strange because i kind of want an idea but i also understand um people who don't want the blurb they don't really want to have an idea and they just want to find out as soon as they start reading so that's that's really interesting um so you mentioned um Noah's Gold. I'm just for our listeners going to read a bit of the blurb um, for Noah's Gold. Um, so it says, 11 year old Noah didn't mean to break the internet. Stowing away on his um, big sister's geography field trip was an accident. And now he's marooned with five other kids on an un- un- hit- uninhabited island. Their teacher has vanished. They're hungry, their phones don't work, and they have no way of contacting home. Disaster. Until Noah discovers a treasure map and the gang goes in search of gold. Okay, that is definitely quite enticing, isn't it? When you when you kind of read that. But it's lovely to have, I guess, the mix of, of humour and mystery. I think that does make for quite an interesting, uh, interesting read. Um, Hamza, did, was Noah's Gold one of your favourites or did you have a different one? Um, my favourite book was Wave Riders by Lauren St. John as its storyline really enticed me and its vocabulary was very descriptive, which I love. Mm, descriptive, yeah, descriptive um, books that really, I guess, it's form of escape and really takes you onto a journey, isn't it, when you get a really descriptive book. And, and again, for our listeners, so the, the blurb for um, Wave Riders is, twins Jess and Jude Carter live a dream life sailing from one exotic destination to the next with their guardian, Gabriel. But after Gabe vanishes and a storm smashes up their lives, they're left penniless and alone. When a wealthy, glamorous family offer them a home, everybody tells them they're the luckiest children in the world. But the, but the Blackneys, Blakeneys, I think, but the Blakeneys stately mansion is full of secrets. Secrets that seem entangled with the twins' own fate. As a race to uncover the truth, Jess and Jude must confront their deepest fears. So how do you solve a mystery when the mis- when that mystery is you? Mm, that's good. I do always like a question in a blurb because it really makes you think about, okay, I need to maybe find out the answer, be able to give yeah. the answer. So that's, that's fantastic. Um, 
so maybe a little bit more about these particular books so um from what i know you obviously had four books to read which we've mentioned you then had to shortlist you had to pick your favorite two um as part of um the book club because obviously the, the idea is that eventually there's going to be like one overall winning book um as part of the lunchtime book club um so how was that process like what did you need to go through in terms of deciding which are your two favorite books um Sateus, did you want to answer that one um i guess all we did was there was like um a paper and then they they put in all of our they put in all of our like decisions which one we liked and decided which ones was which ones was our favorites and least favorite Okay, so you're just kind of almost um, making a list of your own first. Okay, and Zahra, did you want to add anything to that? How was that process, you know, for you? What did you need to do? Uh, yeah, we had to, um, like, pick the book that we really liked. And, um, like, mm -hmm. it was like a voting game. Yeah. So you had to, it was like, you had to vote. Yeah. You had to put it to a vote. You had to read mm. the book to understand it and know what we're talking about mm. then we all had to decide which one was the best out of our opinions yeah okay so th there was a big i guess a big focus on sharing your opinions about each of the books um okay barbara how did you feel in that whole process i felt really exi exciting because really uh I didn't know which one was going to win, which one w would be the best one. Mm. Uh, because lots of other decisions were like uh, Wave Riders, Marcus Rashford, Nova's Gold and so on. Mm. And Nova's Gold does win. And I I prefer myself Nova's Gold. It could have been Wave Riders. Mm. I, what I really, really liked about Wave Riders was that the, the blurb, it just makes it just makes me feel oh, what's going to happen next. I don't know what, what's going to happen in the book and that Jeez. stuff. Mm. You like it's yeah. like a mystery. Yeah, exactly. It's like a mystery. Okay, so I guess it was really important for you yourself to decide first what you really liked, and then you know, like Zahra mentioned, then you have to kind of talk about your opinions, and then, like you said, Mustafa, it was you know had to go to a vote. Um, Barbara, how did you find that process of, of having to vote for a book? You know, how did you um, Hamza? Sorry. I've just got the names wrong, but Hamza, how did you how did you feel about uh, yeah go the book going to a vote? Well, um, I thought um, it was quite difficult as all the books are really great. Yeah. You find it really yeah. difficult, and have you ever had to do Satish, Have you ever had to do anything like that before? Like you have to vote for something, or you know you've got all these kind of thinking and sharing to do and opinions. Um, well, I guess well, I guess yes, but not really with the books because mm. I've never been like in a book club before. Oh, exactly, because it's all a new experience and and having to do that, amazing. Um, and so what what is now next? For example, you know, you you've all uh, five of you five of you've been obviously a few months part of this book club. What are you hoping that um you know Mustafa? What are you hoping might happen next in terms of the book club? Well, in next that happens to the book club, I'm really hoping that. It would do something to the author to help the books, mm. like yeah, because I guess it will help them promote their books. You mean, yes. and then more, and hopefully maybe more people will also read. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping some of the you know authors will be listening in. And the other day, I did actually. Um, put a little put a little tweet out you know and I, I did tag some of the authors and and it was really lovely so the author of wave riders lauren st john she tweeted back and saying you know it was so lovely to read this review and how happy she was that you know um that there was a you know there was a book club and that there was children kind of reading her book so that's really nice and and hopefully you know we can maybe get in touch with some of the authors at some point you know of the other books as well okay so that's really really lovely um right so maybe if we think a little bit about I'm really interested to know more about kind of what what interests you in in reading like why why books so I mean there's kind of this perception that young people spend a lot of time on tablets and iPads and gaming and things like that but what is it Barbara what is it for you that reading like why does reading interest you reading interest interests me because really reading you you one day or another you will want to write a story or something and if you don't if you could like learn some new words like if you didn't know what yesterday uh hook means mm. uh, it might 
uh, tell what it might tell what uh, in what it means. Like yes, say for Squidge's uh, guide to super stories, it gives us tips on how to write stories and that stuff. So mm. and it's a book. So yeah. really, it just gives you the information you need about mm. other stuff in the world. Exactly, and I guess that's maybe what was interesting about um, the Squidge's guide to to writing stories because that was. It's not exactly like a fiction, like Noah's Gold, for example, yeah. is it? It's actually giving you tips and stuff. And um, Hamza, did you like try any specific exercises from that book? Well, well, we did some action tags and stuff, and um, we just did some. Uh, we tried doing the speech as well, so that helped us um, with our speech when we were learning in English. Okay, that's lovely. So it's kind of helping you in your kind of schoolwork as well, which is really mm. good. Um, Zahra, was there um, anything in particular? I mean, what were your feelings for, for Squidge's Guide to, to Writing Stories? I think I didn't find it as hooking, but I still enjoyed reading it because I got some really good tips and now I'm writing my own story called um, The Dream Weaver. Oh, really? That's fantastic. So mm. you have writing your own story and you're saying that kind of trying some of the tasks have, have helped you a little bit in that. Amazing. That's wonderful. Um, Mustafa, how about um, yourself? So do, do you remember any particular exercises you tried from that book or how did you oh, feel? Yeah, um, we saw like on the book club when we were in lunchtime, we were talking about trying to write our own story um, with the... Yeah helping of the book Squidge's Guide to sto- Super Stories mm. to see like how it improves and yeah. how well it does okay so you're kind of putting it into practice um Barbara did you have any kind of opinion on the title of that book because you know Squidge is kind of an interesting name <laughs> I mean it really is interesting really but yeah. Super stories. I thought that if I read this book, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have super stories, and I might actually uh, like make one, make one book, or yeah. like make one book one day, yeah, and uh, publish it. And if and one my uh, like one my loves I like is that I like reading books because books just give my to set my imagination mm-hmm. at, uh, to like another whole ne- level, like another dimension. So that's why I yeah. like. To Squid is a uh, guide to super stories. Yeah, because I love the idea of a super story. And it would be so amazing that you, that all five of you maybe, maybe in a few years' time will be back and I can interview as authors because I would love that, right? You could all be here and talking about the own book you've written would be wonderful. Um, so, uh, Satayish, how about um, yourself in terms of what, what do you enjoy about reading in particular? Um, I guess, I guess reading is like, it builds up your imagination and you can find lots of new words like and mm. it helps with if you want to be if you want to become an author when you grow up or yeah. just just write some stories and try to um yeah no that's that's really wonderful actually i really love your answer because it's true i mean especially what you said about kind of vocabulary and improving that and definitely the more you read the more exposed you become to different words and new words and how to pronounce them and and that's true and that improves your writing doesn't it so that's that's really that's really good um does anybody else want to share anything that they really enjoy about reading you know or or maybe what is yeah go on um mustafa the thing is, reading a book just sparks your imagination so much. Mm. It really helps on a lot of things. Like, yeah. first of all, it helps with your writing a lot. It helps with everything, really. If you read a lot, um, you could do better in sats with, like, your mm. writing. Sure. You could just have help on your um, mental health as well, mm. like the Marcus Rashford book. Yeah, the Marcus Rashford book. So this in particular was Marcus Rashford, you were a champion, isn't it? Um, so yeah, I mean, the blurb for that one is, it's hard to know what's possible until you start. You have to be able to dream big and be prepared to work towards your dreams. I've achieved a lot so far, but it didn't come in one go. Big things rarely happen overnight and good things rarely happen as if by magic. So obviously this is Marcus Rashford, who is a place for currently plays for Manchester United and he's obviously done some amazing amazing things not just as a footballer but actually even if you think about helping the community and helping you know young people when the government were not doing a good job I'd say looking after children um, in our country Marcus Rashford was really um, in terms of his activism and his beliefs and doing such good work and you know 
I think holding the government to account um, but also I guess more importantly in terms of this book you know even the title itself right it's so uh, it's kind of empowering it's like you are a champion yeah how to be the best that you can be um, Hamza did you have any particular thoughts on, on that book um, well I really liked how it just motivated you and it felt like uh, Marcus Rashford was really talking to you yeah yeah i know actually because i read a bit of that and it does feel a lot like you he's directly talking to you which is so nice and i think it's very very um well written it's actually written by um carl anker um so yeah that's a lovely uh, bunch of books i think you've had so that was marcus rashford you were a champion um Nova's gold um, by frank cottrell boyce way riders by so- um, lawrence st john and squidge's guide to super stories written by Catherine hetzel um so we are now heading to the first break um, and we are joined in the studio by students from Beechwood Primary School so that's Zahra, Sitayish, Barbara, Mustafa and Hamza um, and we're having obviously a wonderful chat and I've really enjoyed it so far I'm really looking forward to the second half of the show when we're going to talk a little bit more about some of their chosen books um, and also um, maybe some tips on reading so we will join you in a few moments so grab yourselves a cup of tea and maybe some biscuits Assalamu alaikum Assalamu alaikum, this is Atif Nawaz. Listen to Inspire FM shows in your time by heading over to inspirefm.org or listen on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the Book Club Show on Inspire 105.1 FM. My name is Imrana Mahmood and I'm your host. And today we are in the studio um, and I'm excited to actually be in the physical studio of Inspire FM. And we are talking about the Lunchtime Book Club. Um, So this is a pilot project aiming to increase literary engagement among children in Luton. We want to build positive associations with reading, in particular reading at school, and encourage more children to read books for fun and to have more confident discussions about books with each other. Um, So in the studio, we are joined by students from Beechwood Primary School. So that's Zahra, Sateyish, Baba, Mustafa and Hamza. And in the first half of the show, we were having a really lovely conversation about um, what we started off talking about, what they um, dressed up as for World Book Day, um, and a little bit of why they wanted to be part of um, the book club and some of the favourite books that they've read so far um so again just for our listeners if you've only just joined us um some of those books uh, well four of those books are uh, you are a champion um this is part of marcus rashford and it is written by carla um carl anker there's noah's gold which is frank uh, written by frank cottrell boyce way riders written by lawrence st john and squidge's guide to super stories written by Catherine hetzel so those were the four books um and uh, the whole process is obviously dallow primary school has also been involved so students there also have um their lunchtime book club and they had four different different books and each school needs to shortlist their two favorite and then I think it's around the summertime there's going to be like an overall winner which um, the book club um, both book clubs are going to choose Um, so it's a really kind of wonderful little project you know it's really getting to the heart of the importance of reading and why reading is really enjoyable but even more enjoyable I think when you do it as a group and you're able to discuss um, discuss different themes and topics and you know it's so it's really amazing um to have these students um from beechwood um in our studio today i'm going to introduce well um speak again actually to um zara satesh baba mustafa and hamza and what i'd really like to do is just to start off by asking each one of them what their favorite place to read is so i'm going to go to hamza first well, um, I, I always love to read it in my room. I love to get under the covers and just read in my bed at mm-hmm. night. Oh, that sounds good. Switch I do like on. that. Yeah, and switch, switch like a light or a lamp on. Yeah, that's really nice. Um, how about yourself, Mustafa? Um, yeah, I really like my bedroom as well. Okay. Because I have like a lamp and like mm. a little LED light rope here. Yeah. And I put that under my pillow. And yeah. I just go under my covers. It's like a nice, that's not, like not too a, bright. Yeah. Yeah, not too dark, but it's like the right color for reading. Fantastic. Because it doesn't hurt my eyes as much. Exactly, exactly. You want you want the environment, the atmosphere to be quite mellow, I think, when you're reading. I love the idea of an LED light. Barbara, what about yourself? So, me, I, I normally read at night and morning. But when mm. it's night, I, I like to get a blanket and some cushions. Mm. I get some blanket and cushions, and then I make that I make like a fort, fort, 
and then I would put the blanket all over it so no one knows I'm there. Okay, right. So and then I, I then I get that one of these lights, yes. like a little lamp, and then I read, I would read from there. Do, do, does anybody in your family get worried? Like, do they worry where you've gone? Like, do you kind of disappear a little bit? No, they don't, cause I, yeah. I, cause I tell them, cause I tell them where I'm going and that stuff. Oh, okay. So they know you're going to read and like not to yeah. disturb you. Okay, yeah. good, fantastic. So tell you, how about you? Um, I was going to say the same as Hamza. I just like in night, I like going on my bed, putting a light on, and just reading. Yeah, no, that that's good. And and Zahra, what about you? I'm gonna go for my bed as well because I like reading at night a lot because I I just like I'm all nice and cozy and then I can just read and then go to a different world. Mm, that's right. I mean, I have to probably agree with all of you. It, it, reading at night before bed really helps wind wind, wind me down. And I mean, sometimes it depends on the book I'm reading, but usually, yeah, it really does help me, you know, in, ter- in terms of wind down and, and and then get to bed, which is fantastic. Um, so we were obviously talking about um, the Lunchtime Book Club. Now, in the first half, we talked about, um, you know, your some of your favourite books out of the books that you read, the to- two shortlisted books as well, which is Nova's Gold by Frank Cuntrell Boyce and Wave Riders by Lawrence St. John. Those are your two shortlisted books. But what I was really interested in is maybe to give everyone an opportunity to do a little bit of reading of each book. I think it would be really nice for the listeners to get an idea of, of what the books are about. And obviously I um, r- read the blurb for some of them but i know hamza if you'd be happy to read the blurb for squidge's guide that'd be really fantastic yeah okay everyone is a storyteller really they are think about it we tell stories whenever we describe what we did at the weekend what our favorite present was on our on our last b- birthday where we were on holiday last year these are stories about ourselves and our lives and are more often than not real we also love to use our imaginations and make up stories for play acting entertaining others or because stories keep popping into our heads it's easy to tell a story but it's not always easy to write one squidge's guide to super stories will help young writers capture their story ideas, fill them out with detail and polish them up to be the best they can be possibly. B. Hetzel's information, inform, informal style, whimsical illustrations and amusing examples making makes writing fun. Her emphasis on capturing a story first and thinking about the rules after giving gives young writers permission to free their imaginations. Lovely, that's really wonderfully read. Thank you so much, Hamza. And and there's so much actually even in that blurb, this idea of, of just being giving free reign, not always being um, like, you know, if writing always becomes about rules, sometimes that takes the fun out of, it, out of it. And I think it's really nice to have that freedom to test things, to trial things, and actually sometimes to make mistakes because you need to be able to mis- make mistakes to learn from them. Um, so yeah, that's that's fantastic, you know. And I know we've already talked a little bit about um, Squidge's Guide to, to Writing um, already. Um, Okay, how about we come to um, Barbara? Which book did you want to read from? I wanted to read the first page of Wave Riders by Lauren St. John. John. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, chapter one, Alone. It all began with a rogue wave. Later, Jess, Jess, Jess would think, what if the sea had been wilder that night? What if, what if the wave that broke ranks and ambushed the yacht had been one of those monster sailors, sailors dread, with a glittering crest as high as a house and enough baking pressure to crush a cruise ship or dash a helicopter from the sky? What then? Would she have lived to tell the tale? That's, that that's is, yeah, and page. I can see why you were saying that so many of you were hooked in because, again, it's kind of that rhetorical question at the end of the, the opening of that chapter, which is um, <laughs> really, really interesting. Um, okay, so Tash, which book would you like? Is there any particular book you'd like to read from? Um, I don't know. Not at the moment. Okay, that's fine. Um, Zahra, I think you wanted to read for a little bit from the Marcus Rashford book, is that right? Uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, read one of the quotes that I really liked it is nothing changes if nothing changes which I uh, like it makes me feel like you have to um, like do something for something to change like mm-hmm. you can't just stand there and doing nothing and wanting something to change because you ha- if you want something to change you have to try and make a change 
Yeah, exactly. You need to make the change yourself. So the quote itself was, nothing changes if nothing changes. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's so amazing, isn't it? When such few words... Um, in a sentence can actually have such deep meaning and you're right you know and there's obviously a well-known um quote as well that be the change you want to see in the world you know so there's all these kind of um i guess messages to us that we need to be proactive in the things that we want you know and it's especially if we're kind of looking for positive change as well thank you so much for sharing that um anybody else did anybody else want to read um from a particular book yeah, so I think we're going to have Mustafa. Which book would you like to read from? Um, this is going to be the book that we're doing the extras on. Yes. Because we've been nice and uh, successful mm. on our book club. So it's which, do you want to just say which book it is, sorry? It's a uh, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone Okay. by J.K. Rowling. Yes. And it's the first Harry Potter we... Yeah. Um, it's the first, first book of the series, isn't yeah, it? The okay. First so, book of the series. Okay. So, are you going to? Do you want to read the blurb, or are you going to read? A I'll some read the blurb for anyone who like uh, doesn't know. Yeah. What the storyline of Harry Potter. That'd be amazing. Is. Thank you. Harry Potter thinks he is an ordinary boy, until he is rescued by a beetle-eyed giant of a man, enrolls at Hogwarts School of Witchcrafts and Wizardry, learns to play Quidditch. And does in and does battle in a deadly deadly duel. The reason Harry Potter is a wizard. A claim for Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Like Game Boys, Teletubbies, and films by George Lucas, Harry Potter has permitted the national child consciousness. Okay. The the Harry Potter books. Or the, or that rating, a series of books adored by children and parents alike, mm. by the Daily Telegraph. These are like saying. Yeah, that the media is quite fantastic. That's that's really. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I know, um, actually, that didn't um some of you recently go to Harry Potter World? Is that right? Yes. Yeah, um, Barbara, how was uh, how was that kind of experience going to actually um, Warner Brothers Studios? Well, it was actually kind of exciting when, I, but when I met the spiders, the uh, aquamatulas, the avogog, I just, I, I just felt like. Yeah. I, I was gonna die. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I know that's that. That is quite a scary part, isn't it? Um, how, did anyone else want to share? What do you think of um, uh, Harry Potter World? Um, yes, Zahra. Uh, I found it really, um, really cool because um, we, uh, I, when we went to Gringotts, it looked so cool, and then um, we saw one bit, and um, we saw like this dragon, yeah, and it looked so real, but it was actually, um, it was just actually on a screen, but I couldn't believe it. Mm. We watched it three times. Oh right, you watched oh, it yeah. three times. So it's kind of, it, because I think that's what's really interesting uh, going to a trip like that because it's almost bringing the book to life isn't it yeah. you know but but you know i think was again interesting maybe coming back to what some of you said the fact that it's the it's the books and it's the writing that really releases your imagination and it's really you know because your imagination almost has no limits you know so as amazing as it is with, to be going on a trip like that you know i think what's really lovely to maybe whatever you've imagined and then seeing it in front of you which is really interesting so that's fantastic okay um so we're going to come a little bit now to um a bit more conversation on the shortlisted books. So thank you so much for, for sharing, obviously, um, some of the reading from uh, the books and obviously you included Harry Potter in that as well. Um, so Noah's Gold and um, Wave Riders, those were your two shortlisted books. What I'm really interested to know is what are you hoping, so obviously these books have now been shortlisted, but what are you hoping that other readers will feel when they read these particular books. So maybe Hamza, if I come to you, um, now if we choose, for example, Noah's Gold, um, what are you hoping when other children maybe read that book, what they might feel? Well, in Noah's Gold, our first chosen book, I felt that the characters' personalities were really strong throughout the story. I hope other readers will enjoy that too. Right, okay, so you think there's a big focus on the characters. Maybe, do you mean like, do you think some other readers might um, kind of, feel 
similar in terms of personalities or yeah. you know do you think they'll be able to relate to the characters is, is yeah. that why okay okay amazing um Zahra how about yourself what do you think um the readers what are you hoping they might feel when they read No Is Gold laughter laughter okay so you think it'll be really fun for them to read and they'll be okay that's a very good reason that's a very good reason to to read the book um do you want to share anything on that Mustafa is there anything in particular that you think children will feel something in particular that I think they will love is just the idea of how funny something can be a mystery can be right like how funny is someone getting in trouble Oh, and they don't even know it. Oh, I see. Okay, so Barbara, why does somebody get in trouble in in Nova's Gold? Does something like that happen? Because they broke the internet. Oh yeah, of course, because yeah. it says it in the blurb, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. Because they broke the internet. And how? Okay, so maybe you can find humour in something which is really, really serious. But okay, lovely. And um, how about the other book, which is Wave Riders? Um, Cetacea, What do you hope, or what do you think, uh, the children might feel when they read that book? Well, I guess I just hope they don't, like, just sit there reading, thinking it's boring, like, actually mm. getting into the book and, um, mm. yeah. like, I don't know, getting hooked in or... Yeah. And do you think do you think it, that can sometimes take time to get hooked in a book? I know some of you said that yeah. you kind of got hooked straight away, but do you think, Satayish, it's worth just keep reading and keep trying because eventually maybe you, you'll find the story interesting? Well, yeah, but it, it depends on the book, like, when you start to get into the book. Mm, okay so I guess it probably still needs to be earlier on you don't want to read like two thirds of the book and wait that long I guess yeah I mean maybe I mean I know I have a sometimes I have a bit of a habit where I think no I've started a book I have to finish it but I remember Mm. somebody gave me advice that actually you know sometimes if you're really not feeling a book like you don't want to put pressure on yourself necessarily I know it's different at school and I know Miss Miller's probably listening so I'm not going to say to you not you know you don't have to finish your book because you must if she asks you to read of course you must read it but I think maybe in your spare time it's a bit different um okay so anything else um do you want to share about wave riders um maybe um hamza do you have anything about wave riders what well, will other children feel with the mystery um i felt that it really enticed me and just just makes you really think hmm. is there anything in particular what, what, like, what kind of thinking is it making you do it makes you think about the the characters backgrounds of jess and jude yeah. carter Right, okay, things okay about the backgrounds. Um, now, maybe, is there any more information that you can give about Wave Riders without obviously spoiling it, but something that will give listeners a bit of an idea about it, Zahra? Uh, there's quite a lot of plot twisting. Like, you think something will happen, but something completely different happens. Ah, so it's unpredictable. Okay, and you were going to add something, Mustafa, were you as well? Um, the thing is... You really need to know the background to understand the story. The problem mm. with um, wave riders mm. is sometimes I get confused of like what's happening because mm. it took me like a long while to really get hooked into it. Right. Okay. Yeah. No. And that's a really interesting point actually because sometimes it, yeah, it plot testing can be really interesting, but sometimes you might get a bit lost, isn't it? And then you might need to go back a few pages and mm. kind of remember what ha- what's happened. So yeah, there, there's a bit of work required there. But no, that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Baba, is there anything that you think that students or other you know children might feel reading um, one of the books? Uh, really, if you if you're into uh, people like so that they like the they like different types they like genres they like different types of genres but mm. if you if you want to read like kind of action books mm. uh and like funny books uh Noah's gold is your choice and mysteries it has to go to wave riders mm. and all the other books they're just interesting they can they can hook you in and hook you out whenever you like feel when whenever they feel to it like that's the power of the book because mm. by, by reading the book you feel that it's like it's like a whole different mm. like world right, and yeah. what i really think about wave riders is that it is it is like a good book but if you were to uh, want to know the backstory of it and mm. if you don't want any like suspense then 
Mm. You won't really like this book. It won't be exciting that much. Right. Okay. And I really like actually that you mentioned genres because it's it's true. You know, um, it takes time, doesn't it, for you to really um, understand and maybe learn what your maybe mm. favorite genre is. Yeah. But obviously, I guess sometimes you won't discover that until you start reading lots of different type of books, and then you 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 find that out, and then you know. So that's really actually good advice. And I know a bit later on, I'm going to ask you about for some reading tips for other people as well. Um, now before we do that, we spoke right at the in the first half of the show about why you wanted to be part of um, Lunchtime Book Club. Uh, My question now is that would you recommend your friends or family to be part of the book club? And if so, like why? Like what would the reason be? So I'm going to come to Hamza for that one. Um, Well, yes, I I would recommend um, this book club because it's improved my reading. Not only that, because I've just had lots of fun as well. I've um I've really loved um discussing books with mm. um other people. Yeah, okay. So that's a that's a definite yes. Okay, how about yourself, Mustafa? What do you think? Um it also lets you make new friends and uh, know more people. Mm, oh yeah, that's yeah. a really good one. So like you five here, I mean, do you would you say being part of the book club, have you learned more about each other now that you've kind of had those discussions? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 Okay, so. that's good. And that's interesting. And that's really nice, isn't it? Because maybe in school, you, you, you might not always play in the playground together, but actually you coming together. Uh, and that's such a really nice, and I know what you said um most of it earlier on about reading and mental health and actually that is almost even more improved if you're part of a group isn't it because you're right it gives you a chance to meet other people make friends and you know building relationships is such an important part of life isn't it so that's lovely okay um barbara how about yourself what rec- like would you recommend friends or family to to join a book club and, and why uh, i would recommend uh families family and friends if they if they like reading books and enjoying it mm. then this is the book club for you because here book here in this lunchtime book club you get to like express your feelings to others around you and that and like you said uh, you might not play on the playground but you stay when but when you come together you feel you feel that like that bond between you two that you can just mm-hmm. you can sh- you can say anything you want about uh, the book and mm-hmm. the, yeah yeah, and it's so nice what you've said about bond. I think that's really important. Um, Zahra, what about what about you? Would you recommend it? And and or actually, maybe if I flip the question to you, if there's somebody who's not interested in reading, how what would you say to them to persuade them to be part of a book club? I just say keep trying different books and authors, and you definitely will find the book you will love. Yeah, because I, and I think that's what book club does. You kind of you have to read a particular book, and by reading lots of different books as part of a group, yeah, you're right. You might eventually find that love of reading, which is nice. So, Tayish, what do you think? So, uh, the question is like, if you um, would you recommend uh, your friends and family to be part of a book club, and why? Um, yes, because like, again, uh, books build up your uh, imagination, and it and like in book clubs, it's not only reading books, but you can discuss to each other about it, and it. Like it helps you like um, mm. talk out loud and build yeah. your confidence with it. Yeah. Can you think of an example where maybe you were talking about a book and but someone like disagreed with you? What what happened in in that moment? Like, how did you feel, or, or were you able to change their opinion on anything? Um, I couldn't change their opinion or something. It's just like while we were voting, they were different. Yeah. Like yeah. up, like. Yeah. Yeah, we just went with the flow, you know. Okay, you just went with the flow, and you're kind of listening <laughs> yeah, to each other, and, and actually listening. So it's important, right? You need to listen and be respectful, um, and then obviously, but you still manage to come to a decision, which is which is really good. Okay. Um, did I get everyone to answer that question? Was there anybody that I missed out because I kind of lost track? No, no? I think no. good. Okay. Right. So we are. We've got maybe a couple of minutes left of the, of the show. Um, I wanted to end by asking what advice you would give to um, other children or young people who might struggle a little bit with reading. I know we've kind of touched on it already, but maybe in a bit more detail. So, uh, Mustafa, you go. Um, This is like um, a message to parents as well. If your child, like, doesn't like reading, um, try to put them in a, a book club with more of their friends that like reading maybe they can Mm. confess with him Mm. to like tell him what's the good things about reading yeah that is 
perfect advice i you know i think maybe you should actually have some sort of group for parents i think that would be a good start and actually you know i think you could actually teach parents on how to do it properly which is good i love that um idea um hamza how about you well with younger readers if they're, they're struggling with reading you just need to know you should never give up on reading because you can achieve higher than you think Oh, I love that. You've succinctly put something really wonderful together, and I think that's lovely. Thank you so much. Um, Zahra, how about you? Well, I've really enjoyed the Lunchtime Book Club because I can just be myself with books, so I want to help others do that as well. So, like what I said before, um, just keep trying, um, keep trying all different um, mm. genres of books, and you will find the right. One. Yeah, 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 definitely. Okay, that's really good intention to have, isn't it? It's important to have intentions and, and big intentions as well. Um, Barbara, how about you? Uh, what I have advice is just say if they don't really like reading books or anything, they haven't really gone into the spirit, you could let you could probably like get some books from the library and get some small books, mm. and then their brains will grow and mm. they will start to like like books more and it gives them like bigger bigger and bigger more like interesting books mm. and then once you're there once once that happens then you then then you find the right right path to success yeah that's so good that's really good advice start off small like you don't have to suddenly pick up the biggest book that you can find you know start off small and little little steps you know and then you can um you know dive straight in fantastic satish how about you what advice would you give um i fear for like younger readers if if they like don't like books and think it's boring or mainly like struggle with reading they could just go on online like smaller books and then start from there mm. and start to learn reading and get into like books and actually buy them yeah and, yeah and actually buy them um from shops or something yeah and read them that's good you're right because you, you you've got so much access now even online and you can start that way and then actually buy physical books that's amazing fantastic thank you so so much um for all your time this morning i have had such a blast an absolute pleasure talking to all of you um this morning so we were joined um in the studio by um Zahra, Sitaish, Baba, Mustafa and Hamza from Beechwood Primary School and we were talking about the experience of being part of lunchtime, the Lunchtime Book Club programme uh, we talked about um, the books Wayriders by Lawrence and John Noah's Goal by Frank Cultural Boyce You Are a Champion by, uh, written by Carl Anker and A Squidge's Guide to Super Stories written by Catherine Hetzel um, and it's been absolutely wonderful, I hope that our listeners is giving you a bit of a reason to start reading and if you already do reading, maybe trying to read, you know, some different books and hopefully maybe even forming your own book club groups which would be amazing um now i will be back in um, a couple of weeks with a new book and a new author until then please keep us all in your du'as and take care of yourselves assalamu alaikum thank you for listening to our podcast why not tune in to our live stream at inspirefm.org and follow and subscribe to our social media platforms at inspirefmluton